My mom has been married to her husband since 2020. We get along okay and he's nice, but I barely know him, so I don't have much of a relationship with him. I live mostly with my mom, but I'm very close with my dad, and he's basically my best friend. We both love drawing and graphic design, and so for my birthday, my dad promised to upgrade my drawing tablet. We spent a lot of time researching which one to buy, and it's something that we both were looking forward to. I've talked about it a few times with my mom and stepdad because I honestly was just really excited. Yesterday, I came home from school and my stepdad said he had a gift for me. He's never gifted me anything before this. I opened it and it was the same brand and model of drawing tablet that my dad was planning on getting me. I just stared at it because I was confused and then asked if that was the one I wanted and I said yes and he kept staring at me like he was waiting for me to start jumping up and down and thanking him. I just awkwardly said thanks and went to my room. The reason it bothers me is that, A, it was something my dad had already promised for my birthday, and it felt like he ruined it. B, I don't know why he bought it other than to try to compete with my dad in a way, because why else would he randomly buy me an expensive tablet for no reason? Either way, I just don't feel grateful. My mom told me that I was being rude and acting like a spoiled child, and I needed to apologize and properly thank him. I really don't want to do either. Am I the idiot for not being grateful? Not the idiot, but honestly, the lack of compassion smells like it was your mother's influence for him to buy it and outshine her rival parent. OP, the only way I can see this having happened is that your mom and stepdad discussed this as a way to one-up your dad in some sadly ridiculous attempt to solve a problem, being the nature of your relationship with your stepdad, that doesn't exist. Because until now, you didn't really have a problem with him. In doing this, they've utterly disrespected your feelings and intelligence, not for one second considering how this could backfire and show them to be petty, vindictive idiots. Or, OP went on and on about the tablet, just like she said she did, and forgot to say, don't buy it because dad is. Mom and stepdad then got excited, thinking this can be a way for SD to bond with OP. The easiest choice is usually right. I bet OP's mom and stepdad had good intentions, and it was just a lack of communication all around. You're not the idiot, but I've read enough of these to know that they're not going to see any logic anytime soon, so you can return it to them, which would cause a major blowout and guilt tripping, which has already started. Or you could talk to your dad about what happened and see if he's willing to get you something else that could benefit your craft or just something fun. Maybe even put it towards some special account, car fund, college fund, vacation fund, whatever. If I were you, I would make sure my dad and I are extremely thankful and send a thank you note. Say you're sorry you were just surprised, but it's great now that your dad can do X, Y, Z. You'll have to deal with your mom and stepdad for a while so sometimes you have to figure out what the system can do for you. Just don't let them bait your dad into a fight. That's what they want, at least part of it. Yeah, I can't figure out if your stepdad did this out of a kind heart, but awkwardly, or if he tried to outshine your dad on purpose. Either way, OP's mom is an idiot for the absolute lack of compassion. That's honestly also super suspicious. I, 30 female, am married to a woman, 28 and we have an infant child. My brother and his wife, 34 and 32, have two kids, a young teen male and a young female. We used to be close, but they joined a church when my nephew was young and our relationship changed. We haven't really talked much for about six years. My wife and I are financially stable and help the family in whatever way we can. We have never felt taken advantage of until this situation with my brother and sister-in-law. We buy clothes and school supplies for both kids and pay for nephew's summer camp and private lessons for various interests. Last spring, when I shared the news of our pregnancy, I got a lengthy message from my brother letting me know that they could no longer support my lifestyle. And while they loved me and hoped I'd change my mind, I was no longer welcome in their home. They didn't want to confuse the kids. It's not the kids' fault, so I still paid for the usual stuff last year. I'm supposed to pay for camp this summer, but they decided to send them to their church's camp instead. It cost double. They didn't ask if I was willing or able to pay more. I wouldn't normally mind, but why would I want to pay for him 
to be taught my lifestyle is sinful. I messaged them and said they should have asked me before changing his plans slash budget for camp. They said they didn't need my permission to send him to church camp. I said that that should mean that they don't need my money either. My brother tried to convince me that it would benefit my nephew. They already promised him and he would be disappointed since they can't afford it. I do feel terrible for my nephew, but I don't think they should have promised him anything before talking to me. Two days ago, he called to see if I'd reconsider, but I stood firm. He said I shouldn't take whatever resentments I have toward him and his wife out on his kids. I said it goes both ways. If they have a problem with my wife and me, my daughter is innocent. Does he even know her name, birthday? What does she look like? Has he ever asked? After a long silence, he said, Come on, OP, you know that's not the same. She isn't even actually related to you. Nephew is your blood, and you guys were always so close when he was little. He misses you. I hung up and have been crying since. My wife and I talked and are considering cutting them off and putting the money I usually spend on them into a college fund instead. My mom says I have every right to be angry at my brother, but should reconsider for my nephew's sake. It's not his fault, and he won't understand. He'll think that now that I have a daughter, I don't care about them anymore. I do feel terrible about it, but I'm at a loss. So, am I the idiot? I'm so lost and confused and don't know how to proceed. Not the idiot. Use that money for your daughter. I had to do this with my very own brother for different reasons, but it boiled down to my love for the kids not being enough to justify having to deal with them. No matter how much money I spent on those kids, they still grew up to resent me because of what their parents said about me because I wasn't physically present in their lives. So you are not welcome in their lives, but your money is? I wouldn't pay for any child to be indoctrinated into bigotry. Put the money into a college fund and ignore your brother. His children may need help one day if they don't live up to the standards of mom, dad, and church. Can you imagine what will happen if one of their kids is anything that they consider not normal and godly? I shudder at that thought. Exactly. Besides, if their lifestyle is so incredibly sinful, they should realize how dirty that money is. Which, in that case, go ahead and pay for the nephew's church camp and make sure the church knows that nephew's lesbian aunts paid for it with their lesbian marital funds. Yes, that's right, because only the lesbians can afford to save poor nephew's soul from damnation. I, 37 female, divorced my ex-husband, 38, nine years ago. We got married when we were 19 after dating for three or so years. We ended up divorcing because in my mid-20s, I started putting on a lot of weight. I was stressed from work and had poor mental health. I had a bad relationship with food my entire life and developed a terrible binge eating disorder. When I married my husband, I weighed about 120 pounds, but right before we divorced, I weighed 240. After the first 40 or so, my husband set me down and told me he was concerned about my health and said that if I kept gaining weight, he wouldn't be attracted to me anymore. Hearing this devastated me, but I decided to really try to lose weight. It didn't work. If anything, trying to diet just made it worse as I started feeling guilty eating at all, which led to more binging. We talked and decided divorce would be best. I don't have any regrets, nor do I hate him. I get where he was coming from. We didn't have kids, so the divorce was easy, and I haven't spoken to him in years. Now I weigh 220 and married and have two kids. Recently, I was at the mall, and I ran into my ex-sister-in-law. It was the first time I'd seen her in years. We always got along fairly well, so it was nice to see her. We chatted for a few minutes. At some point, she said something along the lines of, I was always surprised that it ended between the two of you the way it did. I asked what she meant, and she said that my ex had told his side of the family that I had an affair, which obviously wasn't true. Admittedly, I was very upset. I didn't understand why he felt the need to portray me as a cheater instead of telling the truth, which isn't even that bad. So I told her what had really happened. My ex-sister-in-law seemed genuinely surprised and said she had no idea. I told her it was fine and it didn't bother me, but that I wished he would have told the truth from the start. I went home and didn't think much of it. To my shock, my ex-husband called upset. 
He asked why I told his sister that. I guess the truth has gone around most of his family and is even causing problems in his current marriage. I told him I was sorry this was happening, but that what I said was the truth. I honestly do feel really bad though. I don't talk to him or his family ever, and it would have had basically zero impact on me if they remembered me as the adulterer ex for the rest of my life. I didn't realize that they would react so strongly to the truth though. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You only told the truth. He was being crappy by lying to everyone. Even if he didn't want to say the true reason, it didn't work out. Differences in perspective, etc. would have sufficed. He didn't need to lie that you're an adulterer. That just isn't fair. This right here. There were so many other reasons he could have given. He already showed his true colors by divorcing you for gaining weight. Who does that anyway? But then to paint you as an adulterer on top of that? Nope, not okay. Imagine being this guy's new wife and suddenly learning you've been lied to for however many years and he actually left his last wife for gaining weight. I'd be reevaluating things real quick. It sounds like he may have been the one cheating or stepping out on her because he wasn't attracted to her anymore. But instead of making himself look bad, he put it on her so he could clear his conscience and make her the bad guy simultaneously. My wife, 45, and I, 36 male, have one daughter from a previous marriage each. Mine is named Penn, teen female, and her daughter is Amy, nearly adult. We've been married for 10 years now. Our finances are joint because we don't care for money. She makes 70 to 80K, and I make 200K per year. She's in charge of our finances. My wife has the weird fixation on having the kids earn their stuff. And while I agree, both of our daughters are well-behaved, good students and kind. I don't see why they have to earn every single thing daily. For example, if my daughter is working in the kitchen at night and then goes to sleep without putting her laptop away because she'll work again in the morning, then my wife decides that she can't eat anything sweet that day. I voiced, with better words, that I find it stupid. The same thing goes for her daughter. She's prone to forget things easily. And if she doesn't remember to put away this or that thing, my wife removes her phone or tablet. Yesterday was my day off and I stayed back home resting while my wife and our kids went out to buy my mother-in-law's gift. Around 5 p.m., my daughter came to my room and said that my wife bought Amy a necklace. And when she asked for a pair of earrings she loved, my wife refused because the night before, she stayed up late watching Netflix when she knew she couldn't do it. This isn't the first time my wife refuses to buy my daughter things, and honestly, it boils my blood. My daughter is a terrific kid. I work hard to make sure my family has every or most of the things they want, just for my wife to tell them no, because they're kids being kids. When my wife came into our room, I was honest. I said that our rule was utterly stupid, and I was done putting up with it that I didn't particularly like her buying one thing for a girl while the other had nothing, and that until she agreed to attend therapy with me and fix this problem, our money will be taken care of separately and the joint account will be for house and emergency matters only. This means she now has to pay half of the utilities and other things. She didn't like it because her money would be cut short and implied I was financially abusing her by doing this for a pair of earrings. So she went to her parents, and my father-in-law called me soon after. He said I was an idiot and that it was my obligation to provide for my family. Not the idiot. You all should have had separate accounts, agreement as to who pays what and when, how much, etc. when you got together and married. She is an abuser, my dude, not you. She went to her parents and my father-in-law called me soon after. He said I was an idiot and it was my obligation to provide for my family. So, remind him, welcome to the 21st century, and her too. Start setting up your accounts. Tell her it's this way or divorce. Stop letting your daughter be abused by her. She has turned food, a needed thing, into a weapon? Full stop now. She also has a sufficient income to support herself without taking someone else's money. I love that father-in-law thinks OP is responsible for paying for everything in this family. I'm guessing the wife was raised to believe that too. OP, keep trying for therapy. Your kids need help. Update. 
Thanks for all of your replies and comments. I also want to thank you all for your advice. My wife still refuses to do therapy. And as some of you have said, this will be my hill to die on. If she doesn't agree by next Wednesday, I'm sure we'll divorce. I'm a 32 male and work in the tech industry. Some months ago, a junior engineer joined the team and I was responsible for mentoring her. She's a bright, talented young woman with an impressive story. She's also the only woman and the only ethnic on the team. At the start, Maya was pretty quiet and mostly kept to herself. She joined us at a time we were exclusively working from home and most of the team only had a vague idea of what she looked like since she never turned on her camera. Not that there's an issue with that. However, over the last month or so, she was clearly warming up to the team and even making jokes. Last week, we had our first team meetup since the company relaxed rules. Maya came and it was the first time we saw her in person. The situation was highly awkward as a noticeable shift occurred. Maya is physically attractive and it's clear that it caught everyone off guard. At one point, Maya asked to speak with me in private and so we did. She asked me what was going on and why everyone was weird and ignoring her. For example, one colleague almost spilled his drink on her and instead of apologizing, he just took off in a hurry. I explained that they were a little intimidated and surprised, but that it was nothing to worry about. She was confused and I explained that her appearance and demeanor weren't something the guys are used to. She asked me what that meant and I said that she looks great and carries herself in an elegant, respectable way. After our conversation, she seemed even more withdrawn and uncomfortable. Nobody else made an effort to engage with her, so I made sure to include her. I've discussed this situation with my wife, and she thinks I'm a major idiot. She insisted that I shouldn't have told Maya that her appearance was why everyone avoided her, because that puts the burden on Maya. According to her, I clearly made her feel bad and self-conscious. She also said that my team is a bunch of scared little boys, who would rather stick to their little boy groups instead of humanizing and interacting with women. She said she feels sorry for Maya for having to put up with fragile tech bros and hopes that this incident doesn't affect her confidence going forward. I explained to her that she must understand that a bunch of patsy nerdy tech dudes wearing t-shirts is obviously going to feel intimidated when their co-worker is an attractive woman with exotic looks. My wife rolled her eyes and said that I was ridiculous. Ever since this incident, Maya has resumed being quiet at work. Our professional relationship hasn't changed, but she's clearly not warming up to anyone anymore. So, am I the idiot? You are the idiot. What is wrong with you? Your wife's assessment of your co-workers is spot on as well. Exotic. What the actual? Have any of you ever stepped outside? She's a human being. What an awful remark. So, none of your team members can handle themselves around a woman? You need to read back your own post, especially the paragraph about what your wife wrote. Why is it Maya's responsibility to try and warm up to a bunch of guys who can't even apologize to her when they nearly spill something on her? Why aren't the rest of the team having to learn basic people skills? If you can't see that you handled this badly, you shouldn't mentor juniors. You are the idiot. I'm a tech manager and this actually crosses the line. It's also illegal and would be considered harassment. The saying, the truth shall set you free, doesn't work in this case. It would have been best if you had told her you would discuss this with your team. At the same time you did the right thing and tried to get her involved in your work discussions, you and your team did not handle this professionally. Also, the boys will be boys mentality in tech is so tired. And putting the burden of fixing the problem on the only woman in the office is highly misogynistic. Tell the men in your office to be professional or to go home. There are plenty of employable women in tech. We just hate working with tech bros.